Hello, and welcome to our virtual annual discipline meeting for the 2023-2024 year. For those who may not know me, I'm Dane Lamont, the School Partnership Specialist for Penn Highlands Dual Enrollment Program. During our fall 2023 semester, we resumed our in-person ACE Discipline meetings at the Penn Highlands Richland campus. There, our college liaisons were able to hold live sessions with our ACE instructors to discuss specific topics related to the disciplines that you teach. While we understand that it is not always possible for teachers to attend the live meetings, these discussions were recorded so those absent can gain the benefit of the event. Please enjoy the recording of your annual discipline specific activity. And we look forward to working with you in the fall and hope you can join us in the next ACE Discipline meeting. Thank you. Thanks, no, I Thanks, Okay. You get that for sure. Look at that. You know, my daughter called when we were eating. I'm gonna to have to call her at 9:30. I guess I she said so. I'm waiting and, for to make sure the one gets picked up and gets sent the right way. Yeah, that course you were teaching, Michelle. That's my all-time favorite. That intro to geography. Yeah. I just love it. When I don't have when I have a semester where I don't have that, <laughs> and my books are sitting there in the yeah. office, I feel like I'm looking at dead loved ones. <laughs> You know? <laughs> I'm not there yet, but hopefully. Yeah. <laughs> <I'm not scared. laughs> and uh, world regional geography is another one I really like, you know. So, um, yeah. So, hey, thanks for coming out. Appreciate it. I was surprised to see uh, folks from Ju Juniata Valley coming out. So. Are we your furthest away? Because you said my drive's even a little bit further. Are we? Your, your drive is far. I don't know who's farther away. You. Your the drive up there is farther than I thought. Mm. Northern Cambria, right? Um, yeah, Juniana Valley's. Uh, about an hour and fifteen minutes. Yeah. Oh yeah, so then you're further. I'm only about forty. It's a, I believe it says fifty one miles. Right. Yeah. So we're your furthest schools, and we're the ones that came from the right, next. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I saw. Um, I saw I had a couple of Richland guys who just across the parking lot. I saw they were on you know the roster, and they usually do show up. They're rich. They're Richland guys, and um, but not tonight. So anyway, um, yeah, they're requiring they require us to come up with um, some pedagogy they they call it to talk about, and um, it's always kind of a dilemma for me. It's like, you know, what should I talk about? What what's of interest to me and to others? And at the eleventh hour, I always come up with something that's you know of. A, 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 and that I learned from as well. And um, I, th I think I got something tonight we can uh, discuss that's getting important. It's gaining importance uh, in education. And um, I know we were, and um, uh, Sarah and I were talking about teaching government and um, I teach, teach that too. And my objective with education is always to do maybe something offbeat. It's true, but it's not conventional wisdom. Like in government, I really beat up on the, the public servant do-gooders yeah. who are doing bad things. That's kind of my thing. You know, it's uh, it's true. I'm not making things up. You know, but that's what I. That, that's kind of my essays. And and um, tonight I wanted to um, talk about AI. Right, AI is happening right yes. and uh I, 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 I the one hesitation i had about this was well how many of the folks that are coming or are, are dealing with this at this juncture yeah i know here i am i'm under the impression that uh all the students know about it and are, are probably using it right yes. how about you guys you guys uh um, do you guys employ it in your room or do you know kids that are using it how familiar with it? I don't employ it. I do know that it's being used. Like you said, I have a son who's in college. But I like one thing about 
AI and AI sources and resources, mm -hmm. things of that nature. So I know that it's there. And through him, I've been able to pay attention to where it can be seen and used and what sites I need to pay attention to. It. Yeah. But as far as paper to this point, mm -hmm. based on the papers that I've received back from my students, I'm not using AI. You're not using AI. No. Okay, yeah. And I, I feel the same way. Um, and even when I do have a question on a paper, we're a Google school, so I'll go in and I'll look at the version history. I don't know if anybody else is Google. And you can sort of see time stamped as kids are writing papers. And if something shows up all at once, obviously that would be an indicator. Um, you're not going to type a two to four page paper in a matter of minutes. So I will say, though, as a professional, um, with my one AP class I'm teaching this year that is not through here. Um, I've used it to really raise my level of questioning with different questions and sort of getting the kids to think at a higher level. Yeah. So I, I've used it in that way. Like, okay, I want a question based on you know, whatever it is, um, regime change for 11th grade or 12th grade students taking an AP course. And I just type that in and it, it's amazing. Like, the questions that come out of there are things that mm -hmm. I would never be able to craft myself. So you're thinking that? Oh, I've used it as an educator to really heighten what I'm doing in the classroom. Yeah. So. Yeah, I was going to dovetail into that a, a, a little bit, um, a little bit too. So I, I um, again, kind of the offbeat thing here. I have a yeah. suggestion and a solution. That I'll. I'll uh, dovetail into, but yeah, this is just kind of a, a adjusting to these new realities, right? Of, a, of, of AI via right reading, writing and chat, it's chat GPT mm -hmm. is kind of where I, you know, I think things are happening. They're basically, if you don't know, they're um, chat boxes based on, right, of course, artificial, you know, artificial intel and, um, you know, it generates uh, answers as close to human as possible. So it's kind of what you're dealing with here. And, and teachers are across the country are, are, are recognizing the potential of it. You know, Sarah, you and Bill were talking about that. And uh, so um, the question is, you know, are students, will students be better off, um, you know, being uh, educated in that? Uh, that's one of the big questions. I kind of think, I don't know about K through 12, but uh, I, I know at this level here, they they all know about it. They're all using it. Do you guys think out of 10, out of 10 juniors and seniors, how many, how many would you say are using it? Like for entire papers? For papers and, and um, yeah, research. I might have two kids who really actually are used it. Yeah, yeah, I don't see it. I don't see, I would agree with that. No more than that, for sure. Okay, that's probably not a bad problem then. Mm -hmm. Oh, I think it's definitely the next two years. Yeah, yeah I think. Oh, it's kind of skyrocket. It, yeah, it's like it. everything, the trickle down effect has not hit us yet. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a good point, right? Things, yeah, th Johnstown area and Bedford County and those areas there, right? They're, whether it's technology or clothes styles or hairstyles, like everything, yeah, that's a good point. I think if you would ask maybe some English teachers and mm -hmm. they might have to see a bigger number within their classes. Correct, mm -hmm. I would agree with that. And I know the few times I've picked up on it, the words that students are using within their papers and thinking like, okay, this young man would never even oh, know yeah. what that word is. <laughs> right. we, yeah, and I feel like we pick that up even with plagiarism. Yeah. yeah, you know, when a kid copy and paste something right into their paper, you're like, this is not your own. It's not that's, authentic. That's what I was saying. I, yeah. I know that the, that's what the papers that I received back. I'm like, yeah, that's AI. Or forget the pack of punctuation. Yeah. <laughs> you know, they're pretty, so yeah, it's like the texting. Yeah, I, I, that's what I think. Like, the first person writing, my yeah, gosh! In in this paper, I am going to tell you. Yeah, yeah, you're not telling me anything. I would think we can't avoid it, though. No, you know what I mean? you're it's correct. coming, 
And, you know, I've read, I haven't implemented anything in my classroom, but read about how teachers can use AI in the classroom. And even our tech guy just sent out an email detailing like how teachers could use AI yeah. to, you know, in the classroom. And I am kind of interested to see how that works out yeah. i see that as becoming something because you can't avoid it mm -mm. you just have to know how to use it to our advantage that's right yeah i, I was gonna say a little oh my gosh i'm telling you when you have that writer's block even for a test I, i've used it this year where i'm sitting there i'm like okay i need a really good essay question and you know you know what you want to base it around but maybe your wording or just trying to get that rigor and I did. I, I got on, I typed it in, and I'm like, oh, geez, this is better than what I could have came up with. And, and it was good. It was really good. And even for my modifications, for some of my students that have their IEPs, I'll take the same content area and I'll just ask for it to be written to like a middle school level. And I'm like, that's a very good question too. And that would be perfect for these students because now yeah. it's the same concept. I've just brought it down. So AI has brought it down, yeah. but yeah. So you're asking AI to shape it into mm -hmm. a middle school level and it's Correct. doing it. Yeah. yeah. Right. Yeah. I was going to mention a little bit of that here too, how we can, you know, use it, you know, mm -hmm. as well. But, um, you know, when I was doing this, I was, uh, I was finding that a lot of educators, they're kind of, we were talking about the pandemic, right? Mm -hmm. How pandemic's changed sure. things. And, right. Yeah. Um, Someone the other day was talking to me about, you know, well, we're not going to be able to do this because I said, let me see, let me guess. It's either climate or the pan or, or uh, COVID is the reason why we can't do this, right? Making a facetious joke, right? So they, because they're always, you know, things that can't do this or that because of that, you know. But uh, a lot of the educators were like uh, talking about how the pandemic has caused a lot of kids to lose basic skills. Mm -hmm. And again, you guys would know this better than than me here. I think at the college level, um, you know, and then some of this stuff I think is probably at the elementary level. I, I hope skills such as writing their own name and stuff, and but uh, it's it's affected writing across the board. At, at apparently, at grades K through twelve. So you know, again, like what you guys are talking about, is a time that students start learning about. How to appropriately use this stuff, you know, AI and chat GPT and uh, and then for nothing else, like I think you were talking about, Michelle, it's since it's gaining, seems to be gaining strength, it's probably equal, equally important to teachers learn how to, right, how to use it because, you know, it's, what you say, Bill, it's trickling down, right? Mm -hmm. It's, it's um, so, and, you know, besides that, as it trickles down, um, teachers are going to need to be unaware of it too, um, you know, because it's going to be real easy to cheat, to cheat with the stuff. And again, at this level here, uh, at the college level, they, I mean, they all, they're all aware of uh, AI. So here's kind of where, uh, here, I, I'm kind of stealing this idea from some people that, you know, I was researching. Uh, did the research on, and they're saying that in order to get around the ease of cheating and the fact that a lot of kids, like I just talked about, are having, they're, they're declining in their actual handwriting and actual uh, penmanship, and that we start to go to more paper and pen type prompts and essays in the classroom, right? And you'd probably have to, like if you're doing a paper, I should start looking at that camera there too, because I get people out in video land that are gonna be looking at this. Um, it, it, it may involve, like if you're doing a paper on, if you want them to do a five, six page paper, uh, that may cut into the time you know, some class time of actually dispensing facts and lecture, right? But, um, you know, kind of the, you know, the big picture thing I wanted to get to tonight was it's coming, AI is coming, it's easy to cheat. And, um, 
you know, it might be time uh, to start thinking about going back to the classroom paper and you know, paper and pen, paper and pencil type of prompts and and uh, essays. And I'll stop there for a minute. What do you guys think about that? Is that fe you think that would be feasible? As this starts to come our way, and you're going to have to be. I think maybe for our our classes where we see them 180 days out of the year, so we have, you know, the time I mm -hmm. think to do that. Um, I even remember going old school too. When I was at, at my school, the history department, all our exams had to be essay based. Mm -hmm. You know, we didn't have the longbow choice, so that kind of when we had our two hour fine or whatever, we had to write right. our exam, you know, um, and it depended on what level of class, but they would have topics. Mm -hmm. And then you knew like all three of those five topics will be chosen, you know, so you had to prepare to be able to write the responses. I see maybe that becoming, you know, coming back more so as well. And we were, talking about this too about like field trips and stuff mm -hmm. i see i see my people like two days a week yeah. you know for an hour 15 minutes and it's not feasible to do the you know <laughs> most field trips and um the paper thing would um you know would cut into a, a lot of the time you know a five six page paper but uh, yeah, you, 180 days you see them and um, might be, I think you said it's feasible, it'd be feasible I, to do. Yeah, this is my first time teaching the course, so I, they might know more, but I would think more feasible than somebody just coming in a couple of times a week or a semester for sure. I know with our school being a Google school, we are pushed to do things more electronically. However, we actually have what's called GoGuardian, um, and I can, while my students are working, sit at my computer and I have two monitors, but I usually pull it up on my bigger one. I can see all of their screens at any given time. I can lock them out of anything else. If I only want them to be working on something, I can limit what resources they have available to them. I can, you know, open up a primary source document and say, you're going to look at this and then you're going to type over here. And that's the only two screens I have open on their uh, Chromebook. Yeah. So, I do think, like you said, we have that 180 days, we have bell ringers, we have exit tickets, we have worksheets and maps and things that we do so we can get some authentic assessment from them without having to worry about AI. But it is truly a concern on those bigger projects, those papers that are done over the course of a few days or a week. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, it's something to, something to think about. You know, for the, like for the larger projects, for the larger projects, uh, some teachers are encor encouraging like uh, graphic arts and other AI tools. Um, I noticed one assignment where that was used. Uh, it was an assignment for um, an applied English class, and it allowed them to use AI, but it was uh, on uh, like copywriting and advertising. So it'd be like if they were going to sin with it, they'd be convicted of it right there. You know, they're doing a project on copywriting and, you know, so I mean, being creative with allowing them to use it, right? And you know, another thing too, these tools are imperfect with their, their massive predictions. So, um, you know, the way I'm looking at it, students need to become aware to check their results too. That's a problem when they're using these, uh, these tools uh, and then you got school policy issues too uh, I was researching that um, some teachers are using it to create worksheets and you know prompts for writing assignments uh, actually statistics I was surprised the statistics show that teachers are using it more than students are right which is probably good as they're you know learning how to uh, learning how to use it um, there's also a study too. There was a study out there that if you guys have students that are um, that you know are studying a lot, they do their homework, 
Um, there's a study out there that students who are studying at night for three hours or more are more inclined to be using um, AI technology. You know, I mean, over time, right? You probably know students that, you know, doing their homework at home. You know, they're uh, a lot of vigor. They're probably the ones that are using it. Um, schools that have blocked the technology have found that students find access to it anyway. Right. You know, so there's really no, I don't know. Uh, I don't know if there's much sense to trying to block it. Uh, but again, regardless, uh, you know, why not adapt it to the school curriculum in a constructive way if you're going to use it? So, I mean, and, and today too, you don't have the, you don't have the um, steps of your friends you now getting their friends' homework and copying it down, right? Now they can uh, just use Google Classroom, right? They can use Google Classroom and other tools and copy and paste. So, and you know what the problem with that is, uh, kids don't even know what they turned in. Right, that's terrible. You know, kids don't even know what the heck they're turning in. So, I, you know, I'm thinking when a teacher has 50, 60 kids, I don't know about out, out in your school districts, you probably may have to see about 50 or 60 kids a day, right? No, more than that. And then some of the other, and in some schools, you have 160 to 200 kids, depending how big the school is. The cheating, the uh, the cheating detection devices are uh, only going to be, they're only going to save so much time, right? They're only going to save so much time, you know, like turning in and stuff like that. You've got to, you know, grade the papers and check out, turn it in. Oh, this person here, they've 63% uh, of their um, paper is, you know, not their own interpretation. So you, had to get, you still have to go through that stuff. So I, I'm thinking here, if you're doing all this research, the solution is, you know, maybe write out the prompts and the essays on paper in class. Um, that will impact your class time, right? But depending on your expertise in the area and, and a sense for organizing time, I think we can make it work. That's kind of my radical proposal tonight, right? Because it's coming. To, to your point, then I think you know one of the things that have instituted in class is outlines. Mm -hmm. They have to outline the paper first, and by doing that, then you turn it in. You can, you can see a large portion of what is theirs and what they're pulling in or cutting and pasting. So that would kind of be a compromise to the issue of too much time being spent on that particular paper in the classroom. To allowing them to have the framework done when they walk out the door and then having to put the rest of it together at home. Yeah. I yeah. Think that would be a time, mm -hmm. an efficient time saver for both sides. Yeah. Yep. And it also allows you, to, as a teacher, I think, maybe John, you have to correct me, but it allows us as teachers to have a little bit more input as to the direction that they need to be looking. We can help them, mm -hmm. we can prompt their prompts a little bit more. Yeah, I mean, it. it uh, I think what you're, you know, the angle you're looking at it. Um, it gives you, um, you know, a, a wider window on where they're going. You know, what they're, they're what they're thinking, and um, you know, be able to, uh, you know, interpret, you know, where the mistakes were, why they occurred. Yeah, I mean, having a good balance because I think. I mean, I'm not saying throw AI out the window completely, right? AI or a lot of the, uh, some of the outside, out of class technology, but, uh, you know, it's, um, yeah, it's just getting easier to, uh, to cheat and the methods of doing it. Uh, kids aren't learning anything. I'm just cutting and pasting. And this way, um, Bill, the angle you're talking about, it um, kind of adds some guardrails. To help, some good ways to some guardrails yeah, like to that. keep the uh, students um, in the lanes we want them on, and um, 
Yeah. So um, I I'm contemplating I'm contemplating maybe going that route next uh, in the fall semester. Maybe, uh, the only problem is with me is I agonize all the time. It's like I only got so much time to get through the material. Mm -hmm. Like geography, right? Mm -hmm. It's such an awesome subject. It's like I want them to learn about certain tools at the end of the book, but I don't want to have an information dump. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't want to be plowing through things. So uh, this semester, I kind of opted to slow it up a little bit and we're not getting through the book, but I thought, eh, I think they're learning. You know, I think they're learning. I'm confident they're learning. And um, so I got that issue. And again, the time crunch of the paper, you know, five, six page paper. I don't know. I don't know what you guys think. How many, how many days, how many, how many class periods would you be giving up from other types of instruction going this route? Well, I'm kind of in the middle of one right now. I was giving them three days, mm -hmm. three 42 minute periods that I would be working with them on. And ultimately, it's going to end up being a, about a five page paper. Mm -hmm. Okay. But to your point, was, you know, the poems and that kind of started out with when I'm building the paper. I didn't say this is going to be a five page paper. We started out with give me three main ideas. Is geared towards amendments in the Constitution, mm -hmm. our Constitution, and how we how we got to it. Why did we need the Nineteenth Amendment? Right. You know, and then they have to look at the, the women's suffrage and women's rights and how they got to that point, and then it should build. But ultimately, three forty-two minute periods they had to work on it, and then the weekend coming back on the weekend, they were expected that to be And so you have the the um, ceiling's five pages, or they're 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 with the time you're allotting to them through their research, they can well, it could be a twelve. The answer the information needed is mm -hmm. four to five pages. Yeah. Okay. I'm thinking like if you're counting research time, you know, outline time, in class writing time. Overall, if they're writing the whole thing in class and they don't have the weekend, I would think 10 days. Think? Mm -hmm. Yeah. 10 days. If we're going to have them doing the research in class, you know, mm -hmm. giving them time even to, are we doing like bibliography? Are we doing annotated bibliography? Or, but to do the research and write an outline and write the paper. Yeah. I mean, I think that. Mm -hmm. I agree. To do everything in class. Uh, uh, yeah, everything in class, sure. Now, if they're going to do the research, if you set it up that they do the research and reading outside of class, you know, there's three, four days, you know. And you I can cut back that. How many I would say, like, for do their in class period, yeah. you can expect them to write one, I would think, one page. Correct, correct. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And then if you throw in pure editing and like yeah. it, it depends. I mean, you could really scale it down or scale it up either way to fit your needs in terms of time. Right. Yeah, it comes down to your area of expertise, right? right. To um to be able to um you know that's what I'm looking another analogy here to uh be able to, you know gauge that on the fly, right? So I did have a, a website up here that, uh, yeah, AI for Teachers by uh, code.org. It's an online course by Khan Academy. So it's an article that's uh, kind of related to what we're, uh, what we're talking about. That's all I have. Mm -hmm. The the chat GDP me it's chat chat G D T right yeah yeah GDP I'm going to be honest like we just did a curriculum rewrite 
And even for like my set of questions. DPT. Yeah. I think it's DPT, Sarah. Just to get something to refer oh, to yeah. in addition yeah. to the bulk of my other resources. Yeah. Um, yeah. We just got a new one. Um, I don't use it for pen violence. That's separate. I actually use it in our classroom, Mount Aloysius. It's comparative governance. And I believe the author's last name is Wales. W A L E S. We just got it from the W Public. Yeah, it's pretty like so far. It's I actually like the book I use for pen mm -hmm. I like the other I next year I'm gonna the I think it's the 20th edition. I'm okay. kind of really looking forward to it. Okay. Really updated. What really course are you teaching for the highlands? Intro. Okay, intro to Gov. Okay. What's on the cover this year? What is the? Do you remember? I have the same. Mine. I'm, this is the third year I've been using it. So. Oh, okay. Okay. Yes. Michelle, I think you said too. Someone I did, uh, who I observed this week. I, I, did you say you're using the Penn Highlands book? Someone did. Yeah. Yeah. And then, since that first year, it's the newest edition. Yeah, that's very helpful when um, when the instructors are doing that. I mean, most don't. And that's fine. I mean, I I kind of work around that. Oh, I use it, but I obviously supplement. I mean, I find value in like somebody else has used this and thought it was a pretty good resource. I'm going to give it a chance. Okay. Um, for all of you guys out there in video land, I'm going to end the meeting. That's all I got. Thank you for uh, thank you for tuning in.